this module, uh, we will actually be uh, trying to discuss about the different protocol layers uh, in the network, so as to get an understanding of why the concept of layers has actually come in, uh, in order to explain the flow of a packet from your higher level application down almost to your physical wire and then over the physical wire go and reach the destination and at the destination side how the packet basically goes across the different layers till it reaches the application running on the destination machine. So, the concept of layers uh, is basically uh, introduced uh, because of the fact that as a network uh, there is a heavy amount of uh, uh, computing that has to be also done for the individual packets to be successfully transmitted from the source machine and successfully received by the destination machine all the way up to the application. right? So, there are like uh, different uh, pieces in my network as we have seen till now. So, I have uh, uh, host uh, typically the source host and the destination host. I have one or more routers uh, uh, which are there in the path from the source to the destination machine. Uh, I have different types of communication links uh, uh, between the different uh, uh, network devices. I have applications running on the end systems, I have individual protocols and then I have the different kinds of hardware and software running on the router devices as well as on my uh, uh, source machines. Right? So, with all these uh, complexity of so many pieces and so many uh, uh, components uh, in, the, in the entire uh, network topology. Is there any way by which I can put a structure to it for me to sort of uh, be very clear about how my data is going to be sent from the source to the destination number one. Number two for also, for, for also the purpose of having certain very specific responsibilities given to the individual owners of it, so that I can actually have a very clear cut trust model for the different layers uh, so to say, because uh, when I have one layer committing on one particular uh, responsibility, I can trust on it and then expect it to complete it and be reliable uh, from the perspective of implementing that particular responsibility by that layer. Right? So, the whole concept of a layer is basically to ensure that I could assign responsibilities to split up this huge complex humongous task into individual components in such a way that each layer has some very specific responsibility and the layer over that and the layer below that can basically be completely rest assured depend on that particular layer for having done its responsibility uh, without any failure. Right? So, in order to understand the layering, uh, the network layering part of it, uh, one very common example that is always given is something like a air travel. Right? So, when you basically plan for an air travel, the first thing that we actually try to do is purchase a ticket. Uh, so, that is the first activity that will be there. So, once we purchase the ticket and uh, the day comes for boarding, uh, we actually do the, the check in of the baggage, then we go through the gates to uh, board the, uh, the aeroplane flight starts taking off on the runway, goes towards the destination through the airplane routing with the different kind of uh, uh, different uh, support from the ground level, uh, then it finally lands in the destination. Right? Uh, the gates are uh, opened up again for passengers to disembark, then the baggages are claimed and again if there is any complaint uh, you go to the ticketing section and do. Right? So, if you really see here whatever is there on the source side from the, play, from, the, from the place where you are boarding, you have a corresponding level at the at your final destination end. right? So, you have a pair uh, at every level and uh, ultimately at the lowest level uh, you have the, the physical transmission of the plane from the source location to the destination location in a fixed path that is typically given. right? So, if you find there is a series of steps that is actually done on the source side. There is a transmission that is happening on the uh, at the physical level from the source to the destination and then there is a the same series of steps that happen on the source side in a reverse manner that gets done on the destination side. Right? So, if you actually take the analogy of the air travel in this manner, you could actually map it the same way into the 
network layer right. So, if you see here uh, this basically explains it more uh, in the perspective of what really happens at every level. So, I just come down at each of these levels here then the airplane routing happens by the various intermediate air traffic control centers. So, these intermediate air traffic control centers in our network world gets mapped to our router devices that could potentially be there right. And then on the destination side I have the same set of steps that happen on the source side. So, from the departure airport to a arrival airport. So, I go through the same set of steps uh, at the arrival airport in the reverse manner till I get out of the airport uh, on the destination place and then uh, go to my final destination right. So, each layer implements a service. So, this is basically what I was referring to as a responsibility of that layer right. So, every layer will implement a particular responsibility and uh, uh, the other layers above that and below it will expect that layer to actually have implemented it as per the directions given to it right. So, it could do it via its own internal layer actions or by relying on services provided by the layer below. So, both these things are actually possible. So, the same kind of a layering is uh, what is actually taken in uh, to actually break down the huge complex uh, uh, part of the networking where uh, we have an explicit structure allowing the identification or relationship of complex system pieces with the reference model. And uh, another advantage is modularization will basically ease up the maintenance or updation of the system. So, if I basically want to update one particular layer I could do it in such a manner in this kind of a layered model without affecting the other layers either above it or below it right. So, that basically helps me in the subsequent maintenance of it or for the purpose of actually introducing the interoperability portion of it also right. So, in the internet protocol stack uh, you typically have 5 layers. Uh, so, starting down from the physical layer at the bottom you have a data link layer uh, shortly called as a link layer, you have a network layer, you have a transport layer, you have application layer right. So, this is basically the IP stack that is there, but in a theoretical world uh, which is referred to as an OSI 7 layer model you have two more sessions which is sandwiched between the transport and the application right called the presentation layer and the session layer, but in the practical implementation part of it what we refer to as an internet protocol stack. So, you have these 5 layers where my uh, presentation and session layer is typically collapsed into one single layer at the transport itself and then have application at the top of it right. So, at my application layer I typically have all my network applications. So, if you really say that you want to browse the internet, so you run a browser on your client side and you run a web server on the uh, server side right. So, this browser program on the client side and your server web server program on its server side are basically the application level that are actually running on these two end systems right. So, they will actually support different kinds of uh, network application protocols. So, some protocols that you will very commonly have heard of till now is something like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, SMTP right. So, POP and so on and so forth right. Next comes the transport level. Uh, where uh, as we talked about in the earlier module uh, you have uh, uh, two different commonly uh, used popular protocols called TCP and UDP right. So, one providing you reliable communication uh, uh, at the uh, uh, process to process level uh, across the two different systems and another the UDP protocol providing you a unreliable uh, uh, fast communication uh, data transfer between your process to process on your end systems right. Then coming down into the network level this has got a very clear responsibility of routing the datagrams from the source system to the destination system uh, where the most commonly used protocol is basically the IP protocol right. So, the internet protocol uh, that is the most commonly used uh, uh, popular protocol at the network layer whose primary responsibility is to basically ensure that it has intelligence to determine what is the correct path to reach a particular destination and subsequently whenever a packet is coming in uh, with a particular destination IP address what is the path in which that particular packet has to be sent through to reach the particular uh, to reach that uh, specific uh, destination right. So, then at the next layer I have a data link uh, layer uh, which has got the responsibility of just transferring between the neighboring data elements. So, here 
uh, I will not really have the uh, uh, viewpoint of my entire network of what is my source machine and what is my destination machine, but this data link layer has a very clear responsibility of just ensuring that it is able to get into the next hop whichever it has to take uh, to reach the final destination. right? So, it is only bothered about reaching the neighboring element as compared to the, the responsibility of the network layer to reach the final destination. right? So, thereby you see a clear differentiation between uh, the responsibilities that has been actually assigned to the individual uh, layers as far as this particular uh, uh, IP stack is concerned. right? So, some of the commonly used protocols that you will see in the uh, data link layer is what is referred to as a PPP point to point protocol or uh, ethernet. right? Uh, so, uh, these are some, some very commonly used uh, 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 protocol terms that you will find across when uh, people are referring to you at the data link layer. right? Then comes the last layer at the bottom which is a physical layer where uh, the bits that we talked about the earlier module are actually sent across on the wire. right? So, here on the wire has been actually specified as double quotes because it could be even a wireless medium uh, that is really a, a logical wire for me. So, the, the link here could be a wireless link uh, which is basically my physical medium for transmission in certain cases like we discussed in our uh, previous modules. So, when you look at the internet protocol stack uh, you have 5 layers uh, starting from your application to transport to network to data link and physical and you will very clearly see that each layer has a very clear cut responsibility of offering a particular service to the layer above that or below that. right? So, this is basically what we are referring to as a layering model and in the internet protocol stack uh, you have these 5 different layers uh, with each of them doing some very specific uh, work. right? So, how does my packet which I am basically generating on the source machine get sent all the way to the destination. right? So, when my packet is actually uh, generated at the source side by my application. So, if we talk for example, an HTTP protocol message from, a, from your browser application for example. right? So, it is going to now write a message, generate a message and then write it down into the transport layer. right? So, when it writes down into the transport layer, what this transport layer is going to do is it is now going to create a segment. The segment is nothing but a transport layer header added with the message in it and then it is now going to push that into the network. So, when it gets pushed into the network, the transport layer segment is going to come into come in as a datagram in my network layer, wherein I will have a network layer header header into this uh, uh, transport layer segment and then this network layer datagram will now be getting pushed into the frame with the data link layer header added into that as part of the physical link and this frame will now travel over the physical link and then reach towards the destination. right? So, now when this physical frame gets travelled across this uh, uh, network, let us say that it has to reach a switch. So, on the switch it will go up to the data link layer uh, and then uh, it will again come back down and then go and let us say the next hop on the device is going to be a router device where I will have up to my network layer header and then from the router device it will get transmitted onto the, the physical medium and then if this is going to reach the final destination as the next stop it will traverse all the way up to reach towards the uh, destination application. right? So, when it goes over each of those layers in the destination layer you will in the destination machine you will find that the corresponding headers right, will be actually getting removed out uh, for getting processed by the next layer in that particular uh, destination machine. So, when it reaches the de data link layer here, the data link layer header that got introduced in the source machine here will be getting removed out and the remaining part what we referred to as a datagram earlier will be getting sent into the network portion and uh, from, from once the network layer processing is done in my IP stack on the destination machine the network layer header will be removed and the remaining part of it which we refer to as a segment will be sent into my transport layer and so on till my application re receives the message that my original application on the source side had actually written down. right? So, the whole process of converting an application message into a data link layer frame 
by making it pass through the different layers on my source machine is basically what we call as encapsulation. Right? So, the process of get the original message from a data link layer frame and the destination side is basically what is called as a, a decapsulation and at every layer I have a corresponding header added to it for a simple reason that as we discussed previously each layer has some very specific responsibilities to do right and for it to accomplish that responsibility all the necessary metadata required for that is actually kept as part of the corresponding header. So, for example, we said as part of the network layer right uh, the router devices are responsible for ensuring that the packets that is coming in into the net into the device are valid packets without having any errors and also the router devices are responsible for determining what is the path that it has to take to reach the final destination right. So, uh, implementing all these responsibilities it requires some metadata and all this metadata will be actually available as part of the network layer header uh, information which is why this network layer header information is getting added in my network layer on the source side as part of the encapsulation right. So, similarly and the on the destination side because the network layer header is already going to have processed all the metadata that was there finished this responsibility that network layer header information is removed and only the remaining payload of that datagram packet is given to the transport layer on the destination machine right. So, this is basically what we are referring to as a decapsulation because the corresponding header information is getting removed and then the remaining part of the payload alone is getting sent to the higher level layer right. So, this is what we actually refer to as encapsulation and decapsulation. So, through this process my network packet uh, which is actually getting originated from my application on the source machine traverses through my entire IP protocol stack on the source machine reaches through different devices on the network reaches the final destination through this path and then on the final destination traverses up my IP protocol stack and then reaches my final application that is actually running on the destination machine. Thank you.